Laura Solomon is a playwright whose work has been seen at the Edinburgh Fringe and Wellington Fringe Festival. She's also a novelist, with critics commending both Black Light and Nothing Lasting. And she's a poet. Well, now the Nelson-based writer, who's recently returned to New Zealand after living in the UK, has published a collection of short stories called Alternative Medicine. Here's Liz McLeod reading from one of those stories, Sprout. They had come here together to find it. Hand in hand at Benny's for beds on a Sunday, they'd walk down the duvet aisle, testing and fluffing and plumping, shaking their heads in dismay as candidate after candidate had failed to measure up. And now, just as they had begun to give up hope, here it was, sitting quietly on its own, slightly apart from the others, like a shy pet waiting to be chosen from amongst all the others in the store, overlooked because it didn't bark or turn backflips. She had a feeling about it. She just knew. Goosebumps on her arms, a shiver down her spine. A strong sense of recognition gripped her, as if she had seen this duvet somewhere before, known it, perhaps intimately, in some other place, in some other life. It was the last one of its kind left on the shelf. She clutched it to her chest like a linus blanket and gave him the look, the look which said, we found it. Laura, you really made your name with those two first novels of yours, Black Light and Nothing Lasting, and here we have a short story collection. Did you start writing short stories first or did you launch straight into novels? Uh, I started first with novels. When I was studying, I had a bit more time um, to write like in the evenings and so on. Whereas when I wrote the short stories, I was working full time um, and quite a demanding job and sometimes studying as well. So there was really only, you know, time to work on a short story. So I had to fit it in around a crowded schedule. Well, I'm not surprised you've got a crowded schedule because you've written these short stories, uh, you've written poems, uh, you're a playwright as well as those, those two <laughs> novels. Have you been concentrating on your short stories and your plays recently? Because you've had a couple of plays produced too. I'm not a very good playwright. It doesn't come to me naturally. Um, I find it much easier to write prose. So at the moment I've been working on another novel. I'm not sure whether that's going to go well or not, but I'm not sure if I'll write another play. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the short stories, Sprout, that we have just heard an extract from and I'll talk to you about in a minute, was turned into a play. And I was wondering how you did it because I would say it would be a, a challenging one to, um, to produce on stage, given what happens to your female character. She starts having growth on her body. How on earth did you stage that? Uh, well, we just had um, imaginary feathers and then we had sort of, when she was fully transformed, we had like a feathered costume so that you sort of had to imagine the feathers as she was beginning to sprout. But then she, when she was uh, fully sprouted, we had a costume for it. We meet them, as we heard in the extract, this um, loving couple choosing a, a, a feather duvet. He's a painter and eventually she changes into a, a bird or a feathered creature, whoever you like to see it. It's a curious story. Do you remember where the idea came from? Was it with a feather? Was it with an, with an angel, with a bird? Uh, it actually came, funnily enough, from a story I wrote when I was about 15, just after school one day. And then um, somebody told me to enter the Bridport competition. I looked and saw that Jim Crace was the judge, knew he was quite an eccentric writer, not a conservative writer. So I thought, oh, well, I'll give this a go. And I just sort of revisited this idea that I'd had when I was a lot younger. It was quite odd, but it was almost just like an image in my mind from just like an imaginative image. And it tickled his fancy, didn't it? In fact, I think he presented you with the award, is that right? Or chose you oh, for the award? Won. Not first prize, but a prize. So that was all right. That's pretty pretty good <laughs> for an international prize. Your characters are, are interesting. I, I guess I'd say that they're on the fringe. Some of them are hard to like. There's the, the young narrator of the... Uh, title story, Alternative Medicine, who in his spare time likes to hurt animals. And the story is also about his brother who brings home body parts. They're, they're definitely people on, on the fringe, aren't they, the ones you write about? It's because, simply because they're more interesting and they've got stories to tell. I'm not too sure when an idea suggests itself to me exactly where it's coming from. I mean, I just used to take my laptop and go to the library and sort of write whatever it struck me to write. I, you know, I'm not consciously aware of writing about characters as a sort of at the periphery, but maybe they are more interesting. There's often longing. The short story 
offers itself to longing, I think, often. as And I'm, I'm thinking of the story where you have a, a young girl who's anticipated Hayley's Comet and she's this has been her big dream for the longest time. And it, it fizzles into a great disappointment even before she gets to see it. I guess that everybody has, you know, had a sense of sort of disappointment in their lives. And in that case, it's tied in with, you know, the disappointment of her father and the fact that he's let her down and he's not really up to par as a father. So it's sort of tied in with that, just a general sense of disappointment that everybody has in their lives, I guess. Everybody's been disappointed by something. They have indeed. Tell me about uh, Tom Davison and his, his new heart. Yeah, that was just kind of a surreal image that suggested itself to me where a guy basically gets a new heart and gets taken over by the memories of the donor. So <laughs> I'm not honestly I'm not sure where where these ideas came from. I mean they just suggest themselves to me as stories. I do the best as I can um with it. You mentioned surreal there and that is a um a description I've heard used for your work and for these these stories before. Do you do you see that yourself that there's a surrealism there is that a, a, a genre a style of writing that that you've enjoyed yeah I like it I mean I think it adds a sort of tinge of the supernatural to the everyday which um, can help make things exciting um, I'm trying to move away from that and what I'm writing now so where there's almost no where it's just like basically straight realism but it also makes it more sort of interesting and exciting to have things which can't really necessarily happen happen are you one of these writers who, who wanders around with a book and observes and writes things down as you go? Sometimes. I do sometimes make little notes or um, on my laptop I'll make little sketches of sentences and sketches of ideas and then get back to it when I've got a bit of time. So, yep, I note down ideas as I go. I was actually really moved by the eel, even from the, the start of this, where you've got these two young boys and their mums left a note <laughs> to add insult to injury, penned on the on the back of an old envelope and sort of stuck to the fridge with a Donald Duck magnet saying, hi, kids, you know, I need a change of scene. I've gone elsewhere for a spell. You know, don't take it personally and don't try to follow me. We'll send a postcard soon. Mum, that's a hard thing for for kids to to cope with that kind of situation. Well, I think, you know, in fiction, I think one of my aims anyway, I don't know if I've achieved the same, is to try and tackle topics which might be hard to deal with or, you know, the darker side of life, some of the tragedies that happen to people and then lighten it up with a bit of comedy. So you've got sort of like the heavy subjects and then you've got it lightened up a bit. So, I, you know, I quite like tackling these sort of heavier issues. But yes, your mother just leaving would be would be very hard to deal with. Well, you're not like being from overseas. How important is being away from uh, Nelson, away from New Zealand, being for you in terms of your writing? Because you've had success overseas, as we mentioned before, with your writing, that kind of recognition there that there's an appreciation for your work. How valuable has that time been? And has it, has it helped your writing? Has it informed your writing, do you think? You know, I think when you live in London that you're just never short of ideas because there's so much going on. Not that there's not a lot going on in Nelson, but, you know, it's, there's you're in the heart of sort of knowledge and all of that. So on the one hand, it was good for me to, you know, get new ideas and new experiences and develop sort of new ways of writing and to tighten up some of my writing. But on the other hand, obviously, if you live in a big city like London, you've got the daily struggle for survival, which is probably a bit more brutal than it is in Nelson, you know. There's a faster pace of life and um, you sort of have less spare time. So one of the reasons I came back to New Zealand was to have a bit more bit more time to write and to work on something bigger like a novel because um, I couldn't see myself having the time to do that in London. I wonder what the pressure's like on a, on a young writer like yourself when you published, say, Black Light, and it was very well received, very critically acclaimed. I remember when it came out, clearly. Does that put pressure on you? Do people, do you feel that people watch you, you know, uh, for, the, for the next novel and the the next novel after that? I mean, in a way, is it harder to, to start, you know, your first couple of novels being, you know, being high profile and being so well received, if you know what I mean? I think a lot of people will probably learn their craft and maybe the first novel isn't one they're going to be that proud of and gradually they, they hone their skills. But you kind of came into the market with a real wallop. Um, I've often wondered about that and I wondered, you know, if I wouldn't have been better struggling for 10 years and then publishing something. But then, you know, there has been quite a gap and it took me, you know, I was writing the whole time I was in Britain, even though I was doing other things and even though I didn't always publish it, you know, in my spare time, a lot of it was spent writing, you know, and it took me 10 years 
to get a book published and there were you know I did make efforts other than this this short story collection but it just didn't happen like now all I'm trying to think about when I get up and work is to do the best job I can and to make the novel as good as I can and to sort of put my efforts into you know making the work as strong as possible Flame Books has published Laura Solomon's new collection of short stories Alternative Medicine 